Welcome to On Point. I'm Andy Martins for Monday, October 28th. We're live on On TV and we're live on Facebook. And folks, I've waited for this show for a long time. If you've ever wondered how we've got the murals, the logo change, rebranding, the nice public chairs, the pianos, well, I have the answers for you on this show. Katie Elliott, the communications coordinator of Future Sault Ste. Marie, joins me right after these commercial messages. Education is everything. Supporting your true sense of purpose. Here, you'll learn from professors who will understand you, who will challenge you, and offer you support on your journey. Here, you'll study programs built on real values. Business, technology, science, arts and social sciences, always geared to make a positive difference. Here, you'll have a chance to assist in faculty research, leaving your mark wherever you go. Here, you'll focus on what matters to you and impact the world around you. Algoma University. Come take a closer look. Recently, the government of Ontario established a $100 million affordability fund to help Ontarians who don't qualify for low-income conservation programs ease the burden of their electricity bill. Whether you rent or own your home, as long as you pay your electric bill, you could qualify. There are three levels of support available. The first is a home energy kit with upgrades like smart power bars and LED light bulbs. The second includes Energy Star appliances that help keep things cool during the hot summer months. The third is for electrically heated homes so that your power bills don't break the bank during those long Canadian winters. Plus, all upgrades, including installation, are completely free of charge. Visit affordabilityfund.org or call 1-855-494-FUND to find out if you qualify. back with this edition of On Point Live on On TV and Facebook. I'm Andy Martins and uh, this edition we've got Katie Elliott, the Communications Coordinator of Future Sault Ste. Marie. Thanks so much Katie for making time to come on the show. Be here with you today and talk about all of the exciting things that Future Sault Ste. Marie has on the go. Excellent. Yes, you guys have done a great job in the last year. It's been fantastic. Let's start out with your background. You have a very impressive background. Uh, you've worked for an MP and such. And if you can tell us a little bit more, kind of highlight your background. Sure. So I'm born and raised in Sault Ste. Marie. Um, I'm actually, a, I call myself a boomerang because I boomerang back to the community. Um, but I went away to school uh, at McGill University, studied political science. Uh, I then uh, traveled abroad for a bit, worked in different places, and I ended up uh, in Ottawa working for a member of parliament on Parliament Hill. So that was uh, such a thrill for me. I learned a lot. Um, I learned a lot about how our political system works. So that was exciting. Um, but I always I always knew that I wanted to come back to Sault Ste. Marie and so um, about six years ago I made the move uh, back to Sault Ste. Marie uh, from, from Ottawa and I'm so glad I, I did because we'll talk a bit more about this but there's so many positive things about living here and so I'm really grateful to have moved back here and found uh, great employment here. I've had the opportunity to work at the Nordic Institute working on social innovation projects. Uh, I've worked at Northern Policy Institute, which is a policy think tank right across Northern Ontario that's working on uh, different policy issues that affect the North. Right. Um, and now I'm with uh, the City of Sault Ste. Marie at Future SSM, and so it's been really exciting, uh, really positive to work on uh, this project for the community. 
And you're living really an example of you wanted to come <laughs> back to Sault Ste. Marie, and that's what future Sault Ste. Marie is trying to do, bring people back and retain them for a long period of time. That's right, absolutely. Um, you know, we have a plan to, to retain, recruit, and repatriate people to and back to the community. And you're right, I'm, a, I'm an example of that. Um, there's so many great benefits to living in Sault Ste. Marie, and so we'll talk a bit more about that, but um, you know, really the goal of Future SSM is to revitalize the community, to increase the population. Uh, right now, the median age in Sault Ste. Marie is much higher than the Ontario average. We know that. We know that we're facing some demographic challenges, and so now yeah. is the time. Now is the time to put this plan in action and grow, grow the community. Let's start at the beginning. Sure. How did the planning begin for Future SSM sure. in 20 2017. So in 2017, um, Dr. Gail Broad led, uh, led a planning uh, process exercise. Um, at that time, the steel plant you know, was up and down um, and under the leadership of, of Mayor Provenzano in his first term, uh, it was decided that we needed a community plan. We needed a vision, a visionary plan for the community moving forward. And so it took about a, about a year, I believe, um, for that process to play out. It engaged a lot of people, a lot of community members from all different sectors. And the final um, outcome of that uh, process was the community adjustment um, uh, report. Um, that took on a, a holistic approach to community development and that was really new and, and different for the community. So instead of um, focusing more on economic development, it's taking a, a holistic approach mm -hmm. that's looking at you know, social development, uh, environmental sustainability, uh, cultural vitality, um, all of these things. So it's, it's, a, it's a different approach uh, to community development that the city is taking with Future Sault Ste. Marie and it's really exciting. It's exciting to the fact that we were really, between 2014 and 2018, there were some tough times the mayor and council had to do. And we came out of that with flying colors in the last year. Um, how many components are there in future SSM? Yeah, so there's, so there's four pillars of future SSM. So one is cultural vitality, uh, the second is social equity, uh, there's environmental sustainability and economic growth and diversity and under each one of those those pillars there's different action action teams of future SSM so there's an action team on on health on uh, education downtown revitalization um, the environment um, and so on and so on and there's another important group as well as that's the uh, Bawadine advisory circle so that's a really important component of the work of future SSM as well working right. with indigenous communities both uh, urban as well as uh, our neighbors uh, Garden River and Batchewana First Nations so that's also a really important component um, to this project uh, let's take culture of vitality. Uh, give me sure. a couple of examples of uh, uh, so people on the viewers understand exactly where future SSM was going under each of the pillars. Sure. Yeah, I think this one is really easy for people to kind of touch and see and feel. Um, so the downtown murals. So that was a big right. uh, component, and you know we've heard so many positive things about those murals. Um, we had both local artists as well as other artists that came in um, from from Toronto. So I can't say too much yet, but that there will be more murals are being planned for uh, the spring of 2020. It's really exciting. Once again, it'll be a blend of local, uh, international, national artists, and there'll be more of a uh, youth mentorship piece to that one going forward. So that's exciting. Um, the public pianos, you'll see those around town, um, downtown, uh, the public furniture, so the chairs. Um, you'll also see the traffic box wraps around town, the traffic signal boxes. So that was a partnership with Sioux College. Uh, right. Sioux College students designed those, and then we worked uh, with the city to have those wrapped. So that's been really, uh, really exciting um, and that's that's really the exciting part of the cultural vitality is that it's you know we're working with young people and young people are actually saying wow I could have a career in arts and culture in Sault Ste. Marie and that's one of the goals is to really grow that sector so that's been really exciting um, we also City Council just adopted the new community cultural plan um, so there's six goals in that plan with a number of actions and so you'll see more of that um, being implemented over the coming years. In order to be successful as a city, we really need a cultural plan. Don't Absolutely. We? 
Absolutely, yes. We haven't had one yet. This is the first one Sault Ste. Marie has had, so it's a really positive step forward. And uh, there'll be, there's lots of work ahead, but it's nice to be able to have a plan uh, moving forward for uh, to commute or to promote, you know, the arts and culture in our community. What about the pillar environmental sustainability? What, what's in, uh, involved there? Yeah. So right now we have a, a climate change coordinator, Emily Cor uh, Cormier, right. and Emily right now is working on a community uh, GHG emissions inventory. So she's kind of getting a baseline of where we're at right now. We're one of 60 communities across Canada that was funded uh, to, to do this. Um, from the Canadian Federation of Municipalities. So we're working with our counterparts right across the country and Northern Ontario. Um, but Emily is specifically looking at Sault Ste. Marie and working with industry, uh, private employers, uh, public employers on our current uh, GHG, GHG emissions. Right. Um, and then once we have that baseline, um, the next step will be to figure out what our targets are and then what the plan is to meet those targets. Social equity is another important piece. It really is. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, we can't move forward as a community unless everybody's moving forward as a community and and, and supported and lifted up. So, um, Lauren Dockstader is our social equity coordinator, and she has uh, a amazing background working in in this in social equity area. Um, so she's looking at uh, education indicators. She's looking at poverty reduction, all sorts of things. Um, she's also really involved involved with uh, engaging uh, the Indigenous uh, community. Um, there's another group called Nindasawin, and Nindasawin uh, is a group of Indigenous leaders, uh, community members, um, who's looking at ways to uh, move even further towards reconciliation. Um, and so that's under her umbrella as well. So there's lots of different components that she's uh, working on, and she's working very closely with agencies and other community organizations because that's really the only way we're going to move forward with any of this, right? So um, lots of work in that area, but we're certainly um, coming together as a community. Awesome. And one, yeah. one more economic growth and diversity. Yeah. Uh, that, that's again, I, we need to attract people here. Absolutely. Absolutely. So a big component right now of the economic growth and diversity is looking at uh, attracting people to the community. Sorry, my earpieces. Uh -huh. Coming out a little bit. Uh, Anyways, okay. sorry, there we go. Um, and so um, we do have a labor force coordinator as well. And so they've been extremely busy. Um, Paul Sayers, and he was just down in Oshawa uh, speaking to uh, employees who were laid off at the GM plant, right. um, trying to attract those workers to the, to the community. Algoma Steel went down with him. Um, there's lots of other efforts. We were in uh, Toronto and Mississauga last year having Sault Ste. Marie job fairs. We had 20 plus employers come with us. Um, to speak with people about the benefits of moving to Sault Ste. Marie, the job opportunities that are available. Um, because right now, the average age uh, of a, a worker in Sault Ste. Marie, about 25% is over the age of 55. Yeah. Um, so yeah. That's, yeah. that's a major issue, and that represents about 8,500 jobs. Right. So we need to attract people to fill, to fill those skilled positions uh, moving forward. So Paul's working really hard on that, and uh, part of that is the Rural Northern and Immigration Pilot Program. Uh, that Sault Ste. Marie was successful in uh, becoming one of the 11 communities across Canada. Um, and so he's working on that program that will be launched in November, uh, where we will be uh, taking in about 100 uh, newcomers uh, to the community to fill uh, high skilled positions. Awesome, Katie, stay right there. We'll take a couple commercial breaks and we'll be right back with On Point.
1899, the Machine Shop has been a unique space for innovation and creativity. Once a leading pulp and paper company, the Machine Shop was built by Francis H. Clerg, which later became part of St. Mary's Paper in 1984. After the closure of St. Mary's Paper in 2011, the Machine Shop spent four years vacant. In 2015, the Machine Shop reopened their doors to the community for the first time. From weddings to galas to concerts and festivals, the one-of-a-kind venue has something for everyone. We are proud to work with the community and local nonprofits to host major events such as Festival of Trees, Pearls and Plaid, an evening at Hogwarts, and more. While you're here, wind down at the Mill Steakhouse and Wine Bar for a quiet dining experience, or watch a game and try a wood fire oven pizza and local draft at the Boiler Room. Don't forget to save room for house-made gelato and baked goods at the Gelato Mill. For more information on the Machine Shop events, history, and restaurants, visit machineshopinc.ca. Three great places, one historic venue. Welcome back to On Point. We're live on On TV, live on Facebook. We're talking to Katie Elliott, the Communications Coordinator for Future SSM, and having a great time. Welcome back, Katie. Thank you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, the logo and the rebranding. You and I were talking before the broadcast. That wasn't always an easy sell, and I looked at it this way. To have a major transformation and rebirth of this community, you have to change the logo and the rebranding. You can't do it any other way, but it wasn't always an easy sell, was it? Yeah, so, you know, the like I always say, the rebranding is so much more than just the logo, right? It's the imagery we're using, it's the messaging, it's it's really the vision for the community going forward. And so as part of Future SSM, as, as we're working all these projects, yeah, absolutely, you know, we need to have a fresh, modern, new brand for the community. And, you know, I'm really proud of the work that went into developing that brand, uh, the consultations that, that did take place along the way. Um, and I think, you know, what we have now is a platform that we can go and, you know, not only sell Sault Ste. Marie outside the community, but also build community pride in, you know, in our community. Um, you know, that work-life balance that we talk about as part of the brand, you know, that's what people are looking for. When they're looking to move to Sault Ste. Marie, they want, you know, to have that 10 minute commute time, you know, right. to not be in a car for two hours, um, to be able to get to the water in f 15 minutes, you know, um, and to have that good quality uh, job opportunities. Right, um, and right. also, you know, part of the brand is, you know, where you belong, you know, where you belong for people that, that live here and have, you know, grown this community throughout the years and also where you belong for people, for newcomers and, and other people that we're, we're attracting into the community. So. Um, you know, it's there's a lot of versatility with the brand. There's so much we can do with it. It's really exciting. I think you know you'll see it on the buses around town, and you'll start to see it in other places more and more. Um, but it's it's really exciting. It's positive, and um, you know this this brand is for is for our young people. It's the future of Sault Ste. Marie. It's the brand is for the future of Sault Ste. Marie, and so. Uh, I, I think it's a really positive step forward and, and the community is definitely, you know, definitely more and more behind it, absolutely. Um, we're seeing that um, right across the board with it, so it's, uh, it's, it's exciting. It's been received very well then for the um, last six to eight months. I, I absolutely. know it has, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think, I think when people see it more and more in the different applications and the different imagery and, and the different things we're doing, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very positive. And when people come to a visit to look, they'll say, well, this community is really serious about rebranding. And, you know, if you have the same old, same old, it just doesn't work the same way. Yeah, we had to be bold and, and do something different. And that's exactly what this brand represents. And so it's, uh, it's like I said, it's been very positive. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you, Katie, how much of Roger Brooks's recommendations did play in the future SSM? They're definitely playing into the work that we're doing. Um, as I mentioned, one of the goals is town, downtown revitalization. And we've been working very closely with Josh and his team at the DTA. They're doing amazing things. I was just at the uh, Halloween on Queen event this Saturday, and it was amazing. So right. kudos to them <laughs> for all the work that they're doing. Um, but some of the recommendations, uh, like, the, like the public plaza, that was a big recommendation. And that is something that's moving forward and that future SSM is, is also working on. 
Um, and so I had mentioned to you, Andy, before that we, we've actually been going into classrooms and speaking with high school students about what would they like to see in this public plaza. You know, we want right. to get them involved in the planning and what elements would they would make them want to come there and what elements would make them feel safe and all those sorts of things. So um, certainly so his recommendations are playing a part in what we're doing. Yeah. It's, I, it's just great that because, uh, you know, every little piece helps the puzzle. And you mentioned the public plaza. That has to be built. That is, I can't uh, tell you how important that is to, uh, to the overall projection of Sault Ste. Marie. People could go to Dundas Square in Toronto and mm -hmm. then tell me a public plaza doesn't work. It works. Yeah, it's, it's very exciting and it'll be a place that people can come gather. There's all different elements that we're looking at right now, um, but it certainly you know becomes a core area for people to gather in the downtown um, near the waterfront. And so it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's exciting, it's another really positive step forward and as part of this overall vision uh, that we're, we're, we're working on to grow the community. Exactly, it just gets you a passion flowing. Absolutely. Let's, let's talk about the R3, the plan to grow this community, mm -hmm. retain, recruit, and repatriate. Uh, what, uh, can you give us uh, little, uh, details on what that involves? Sure, yeah. So, so that is an overall plan to, to grow our population and grow the community. Um, so I'll just talk about three of them, um, just talk a bit about each one. So retain. So we know that we've had uh, negative net migration in Sault Ste. Marie for decades, and we want to keep our, you know, keep mm -hmm. our young people here. Um, and so we're working with the school boards um, through the education action team on different ways that we can do that. So we're matching the skills that they're learning with the jobs of the future in the community. Like that's a big piece of it. We're also working with Sioux College and Algoma University really closely as our post-secondary institutions um, to see how we can, you know, tie all of this together uh, so that that young people see a future, an opportunity in our community. That's so important. Um, recruiting, so I talked a little bit about um, our, the RNIP program, the Rural Northern and Immigration Pilot Program. So that's moving ahead. Um, and repatriate. So we have, uh, we have a group called the Sioux Network. Mm -hmm. And so this is a network of uh, expats of Sault Ste. Marie or ex Sioux that live around the world. And so we're connecting with them. Uh, we've held events, we send out a monthly newsletter just to give them updates on new job opportunities, um, to give them updates on positive things that are happening in the community, if there's ways that they want to get involved and they want to contribute. So that's been really positive. Mm -hmm. um, another piece that I did want to touch on actually with Retain is some of the work that we're doing um, with people, so local people who are having difficulty uh, finding employment. Um, so we have partnered with uh, the DSAB and local hotels to uh, launch the um, I want to make sure I get the name right on this, but it's a program um, that is connecting um, people who are currently on Ontario Works um, with local hotels and they're actually getting hands-on training and uh, we went through the first phase of this project and now several of those people have full-time jobs with these hotels. Great. So that's a really positive step forward. So the next one is going to be the retail sector and then we're hoping to even do it in other sectors as well. So that's also part of you know retaining uh, people here locally. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's, it's a multi-tiered approach. We're not just looking at, you know, solely attracting newcomers and not just solely looking at retaining youth, but it's really looking at all of these different um, pillars together and how we can, we can grow the community. Awesome, and, and that's really what it is. It's a team effort to get mm -hmm. there. And uh, the Welcome to Sault Ste. Marie website, media platform, is another piece of that, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So we developed a new site. It's called welcometossm.com. Um, and part of that is also an Instagram site, at Welcome to SSM. So I encourage people to check it out to follow. Um, really what it does, it puts everything into one space. So the website shows uh, local job opportunities. It also shows um, the great quality of life we have here in Sault Ste. Marie so there's things like you know top 10 reasons to move and links that sort of thing but we also have information on real estate um, real estate prices like right now the average price of a home is under two hundred thousand dollars in Sault Ste. Marie and that's very right. attractive for people who are in Toronto who are paying much more than that and commuting two or three hours a day 
So we're really promoting that sort of thing on the site as well. Um, and we also have information on affordability, on um, things to do, ways to get involved in the community, all those sorts of things. So it's everything into one spot. So when people are searching our community and, and looking for, for places to potentially move, they can, they can uh, go through this site and get more information. Um, and you'll also see more, you know, imagery of Sault Ste. Marie that may, you know, we want to kind of show Sault Ste. Marie in an unexpected light. So, um, you know, like I had mentioned earlier, we want to attract people, but also build community pride and celebrate all the amazing things that we have in this community. You know, that's part of what Future SSM is doing, is celebrating what we have here, building community pride while also attracting people. And so these are a couple of the tools that we're, we've developed. And uh, we've also, there's some videos on there. You'll see testimonials of families who have moved to Sault Ste. Marie, moved back to Sault Ste. Marie. So we're doing more and more of those. Um, so th that's exciting. And we'll continue to, uh, to build this story and to build the positive image of our, of our awesome community. That's really important to do, isn't it, Katie? Because mm -hmm. everybody else is trying to retain and uh, in people as well in the mm -hmm. north, and we have lots of competition in this process. Yeah, absolutely. We're not the only community that's looking to do this. And so we really want to, we want to stand out with our efforts. Um, a good example of that is when I mentioned earlier, Paul had gone to Oshawa to the GM plant. You know, we were the only community outside of the GTA to do that. Um, yeah. because we're putting forward those efforts. So I think there's a lot of examples like that of what, uh, you know, Sault Ste. Marie is doing a bit differently. And it's, uh, we should all be proud of that and it's exciting and it's, it's positive. Great, thank you so much, Katie, for being on the show. Uh, time runs out quickly it when does. you're having fun. <laughs> Katie will be back in one week. So we got a lot more to cover and an exciting topic. Uh, thanks, Katie. We'll be back right thanks, after Andy. these commercial messages. celebrating our 65th anniversary dating back to services originating in our community in 1954 which is quite some time ago. It's been a great opportunity this past year to recognize the, the pioneers, the stakeholders that worked tirelessly um, to create uh, what we are today. I'm grateful for everything that the families 65 years ago and the people that assembled the organization um, have done in order for us to achieve the success that we're experiencing 65 years later. We're back on On Point. I, I hope you've enjoyed the show. We've been live on On TV and Facebook. And uh, again, Future SSM is so important for this community. It's been the top three of what I wanted to do on this show. And Katie will be back again next week. Tomorrow on On Point, Lori LeClaire joins me to talk about the challenges of owning a business and customer service. We'll see you then. Have a great day. Andy Martins for On Point.